and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some Sultai Treachery to start up Rank Up Sunday. There's just not a better deck for me to be playing here on Rank Up Sunday, not a deck that I enjoy more than Sultai Treachery. So we're going with that and we're going with Grixis Control, as you all know, two of my favorite decks. Um, and then we have a couple of donation decks to be doing after that, uh, two teamer donation decks with teamer elementals and teamer flash, which is also a standard 2020 deck, which is why I have it listed as that. Um, I'll just, I'm just going to put it as donation deck though for, for now. Um, all right. So we have Sultai Treachery, same list we've been playing the last couple of times. Um, you know, nothing new here. Um, yeah, so we're just going to kind of get back at it. Uh, I still really like where this list is at. I know there's a lot of like little one ofs in the main deck, uh, specifically like quasi duplicate mirror image spark double. They get sideboarded out a lot, but that's because game one, uh, they're game one, you don't have as much interaction on either side. And so having these extra clone effects can be really useful, especially when you have cards like Neoform and Prime Speaker Vanifar that you can get specific tools out of your deck and everything. Um, but then games two and three, both you and your opponent have a lot more interaction and having creatures stay out on the battlefield is a little bit tougher. And so you don't really want to rely on having creatures out on the battlefield and then other spells that copy them as much after sideboarding. And so I do take them out quite a bit. Um, but I, I still like them. I like them in game one and we get to do some really cool and crazy stuff with them. So let's give this a try. We are really close to Mythic. We had a really good rank up day yesterday. We're basically doing rank up uh, weekends. since I was only doing two days here for rank up Sunday. So yeah, we're almost at Mythic. We just got to win three more matches. But of course, every loss puts us back. So we are three wins away. So if we're going to play like five matches with Soul Tide Treachery here. So we could go like four and one, and that'll get us there. Uh, so hopefully we get uh, hopefully we get there. Let's see how we do. Well, starting with the mulligan. So this is pretty awkward. How we don't have the double black for Chupacabra. We don't have triple blue for Cavalier either. I'm going to put the mirror image back. I think we're going to need all of these different lands for different things. So we need to draw a, like, of course, just a green black land would be the best. So it looks like we're playing against Grixis Control. Which I'm happy with our Grixis Control matchup. Our hand, not as much, but just the matchup in general. I like what we have going on here. Absolutely, Sultai is going to be very competitive after rotation. It may not look exactly like this, but Sultai has all of the tools that it needs to be competitive. Um, the next set also has some good Sultai tools. So save and trophy for five mana Nicol Bolas. But I really hope my opponent, like, now that our trophy's gone, I really hope they don't have five mana Nicol Bolas. Of course they do. I'm a god once again. I will return. Let your weak minds crumble. That almost hurt. 
Well, we got a four mana three three. It's about as good as we can do here. I have other plans. I know. Every time I, I say that, this is really like the only card that was gonna that was gonna beat us. But um, yeah, it's just really hard to to defeat that card. It's interesting they let my 3-3 three, three hit Nicol Bolas like that. Alright. Good game. I've done a, a whole lot of that um, on my side with the Nicol Bolas Dragon God. But still like our chances here. Okay. So I don't think we really want the copy effects because as we saw it's kind of difficult to have things stick. Also Chupacabra isn't spectacular as we saw with, with those games. I mean Chupacabra does kill the Ravager and that is quite important. But I think just one Chubacabra is fine, especially with those having age, the Agent of Treacheries. Um, right now I'm debating between Vanifar, Neoform, Leafkin, or Paradise Druid. Those are the four. I'm going to keep Vanifar. It's so like Neoform, Leafkin, Paradise. Mostly Neoform is going to be like turning two drops into Risen Reefs. For the most part, there. I'm going to take out a Leafkin Druid. While Leafkin works well with Risen Reef on its own, it's not a very good card. You can draw it like later. You know, it's just an, an 03 if Risen Reef isn't out there. Um, okay, it looks like we're mulliganing again. Grixis is not the kind of deck that you want to be mulliganing against. So I think I kind of want to put the trophy on the bottom, honestly, because my opponent's going to Thought Erasure it away anyway. And I kind of just want it in my deck. I just decided to change it, Samantha, to just say donation deck instead of the S20, because that's something a little different that people would ask. Like, maybe be like, what, what does S20 mean? And that kind of stuff. But yeah, we're, it's still a, tan, a standard 2020 deck that we're going to be playing later on. This is exactly where Grixis wants to be. You mulligan and then into double thought erasure. Just like game one, this can't really go any better than what it's going for our opponent.
least no Nicol Bolas Dragon God, because that would have ticked up and we would have had to exile a resource and we would have just never been able to play Agent of Treachery. So I think my opponent's going to be just playing a Sweeper. I'll just take the one damage. Yep. If you haven't heard of me, then get ready to meet my so Let's make some more room to fight in. Hmm. Well, I liked my chances of winning this game, or like this match, like I said before, but um, I think we would generally, but just these games didn't work out too well for us. So we still got a shot. That's a good draw step. Lolly Jaeger, what's up? Is it just me? Or is it getting a little warm? Yeah, I understand. Yeah, college does keep you busy for sure. Happy to have you here. Welcome back. Hopefully it's good busy, though. Hopefully it's good busy. Okay, good. Yeah, that, that is good. Environmental tech, get to be out, outdoors a lot. I like that. And yeah, but that's that's enjoyable. Well, good, happy to hear. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> All right, so we're at 14 with a couple of triggers. Or a couple of, sorry, a couple of... Uh, Emblems. My opponent's at 20 me? with one emblem. Getting a little warm in here? We're hoping no more of these bedevils. Oh, they had an elder spell? Okay. Out. So I was hoping to be able to untap and get another Chandra emblem to be able to tie it up. Chandra emblem wise. Ooh, that's big time. The only life gain I have in my deck are the Yurox. There's only two, one in the graveyard that we milled over with the Cavalier. I will remake the multiverse in my... Your existence is pointless. All right, well, I got punished for not playing this Watery Grave last turn. Got real punished there. Do you think they should print Emblem Interaction? No, not really. No, I don't think Emblems really need Interaction. Or, yeah. Yeah. I think that that's um, fun and interesting that there is a part of 
you know, there is something that you don't get to interact with like that. Um, I'm glad it's not, I'm glad emblems aren't a bigger part of magic. I don't want it to be something that's like huge. There's just like emblems everywhere kind of thing. Looks like we're dead. I don't think I can gain life. Well, my opponent's really mean. It's unnecessary. So what can I do to gain life? Yeah, I don't I don't think there's any way I can gain life. No, there's not. So the, the Siege King Commander is 4 damage. Right there. Um, and then the, two, then the 2 damage from the Emblem. If I, if I try to steal the Siege King Commander, they just, just do 4 damage in response. And then I'm at two, and then then I take two from the emblem because they they get to do the four. Like I was essentially at two with the the emblem right there. Um, well, I wouldn't mind playing that matchup over and over again, but just didn't go our way that time. Right, Yurok has lifelink, but we don't we don't get an attack step. We were dead at during our next upkeep to the emblem. And if if we got Yurok, then we would have been dead to uh just the Siege Gang Commander anyway. But yeah. Hey Sloth. Oh no, Samantha no. You accidentally copied Cavalier instead of Agent. You meant to copy Agent, no. Hey, Achille, good morning. Alright, not an ideal start against Mono Red. Risen Reefs are pretty weak to Chain Whirler and just kind of everything in their deck. Also. We are definitely sideboarding out Agent of Treacheries in this matchup with them costing 7 mana. So this is just a pretty bad hand for us. Hopefully hit land. No, this one's over. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. I think that the standard 2020 should be best of three as well. Absolutely. I brought I mean, that's not really even a question. Alright, so against Mono Red, I'm bringing in Negates, Legion's Ends, Chupacabra, and Trophy. And we're cutting a mirror image, quasi duplicate, um, all these agent of treacheries, this immortal sun, the find. I like leaving in the spark double with this matchup because spark double can copy legendaries, and so we can copy your rock, uh, which can be really nice. I don't really like hostage taker as much. I think hostage taker is a little slow. Um, and it's also really vulnerable to their removal spells. It's hard to pull off where, like, I'd want, like, Hostage Shaker against, uh, against vampires.
but yeah, yeah, the event should definitely be best of one and best of three. It doesn't. There's no reason for it not to be. Hmm. I'd really like to draw like a Legion's End or, you know, a Paradise Order. You know, like something to do on turn two. I'd really like to draw that. Of course. So why do I have mirror image instead of a, a second quasi duplicate? Because we can, because you can find mirror image with Neoform and Vanifar, and there are times where you need to be doing that. All right, so holding up negate here for a light up the stage. All right, well. Unfortunate. Because it does mean that I'm probably gonna have to shock later on. Yeah, and yep, and it works with Moldrotha as well. All true there. A little late there with the Leafkin. <laughs> now they have light at the stage, of course. Uh, I only played the the 2020 event on um, on last Monday. That's the only time I've played it. So Paradise Druid does allow me to counter this Frenzy, so they don't get a Frenzy. I guess they don't want Frenzy. Isn't this better than having a plan? Basically, anything. Well, that's not great for me. Chandra's going to be tough to beat. What? They don't have mana. Why would they just minus two? I'll just add a loyalty counter minus two the next turn. Come on, Chandra, remember that spell. <laughs> People like this give Mono Red a bad reputation. I brought company. Maybe. Yeah, Golos is, is or sorry, Yurok is awesome in the in even in the Golos decks and everything. Yurok's just pretty awesome.
I was planning on uh, Neo forming the Risen Reef here and turning it into Vanifar, where then I'd be able to play Chupacabra and sacrifice Chupacabra to turn turn Chupacabra into your rock. And you'll have a 3-5 Vanifar out. So that was my plan. But then, of course, we drew the Leafkin Druid, so get him, buddy. just did that. Throw another punch, and you're gonna get burned. So, do I still want to do that here, or do I just want to play Chupacabra out? I think I still do that here. Hey Kempachi, doing well. Doing well. Well that's not good. That's really not good. That is really not good for me. Ugh, training is so hard. I would have just played Chupacabra, and if we neoformed Chupacabra into the Yurok, Yurok would have been a four six, so it would not have died to um to fry. Alright, do we draw Yurok? Can we find a Yurok? No. We've done a pretty bad draw job of just drawing all of our mana creatures here in the late game. Definitely happens sometimes with mana creature decks, but it's not what you want at all. And you know, sometimes you do just draw all your mana creatures late. Uh. Hasn't been our day today so far. Oh man, yeah, I am so sorry to hear that, Kempachi. I'm so sorry to hear that. It's always a, a really sad day whenever you lose a pet. It'll get better though. More mono red. So looking back at it, you know, hindsight and everything, but if I would have just played Chupacabra out last game 
and then Neoform Chupacabra and gotten a 4 6 year rock, I think we win that game. Um, but you know, hindsight. Chain Whirler obviously would be devastating. Really hope no Chain Whirler. It's Chain Whirler just on the game. Alright, good. No Chain Whirler. Now we need to draw a land also. Okay, good, good. So, assuming my opponent just plays a whole bunch of creatures here, you know, I'm assuming there's going to be like Chain Whirler and Lava Runner played, you know, maybe it, maybe more creatures even, you know, with the help of Steamkin, you know, they'll have an extra, like extra mana. Uh, we can finality next turn with having this forest on top. Hey, Rackle Guru, and hey, MTG Nerd Girl, how's life been? Good. I like love to see that. Really want to see just more creatures for this finality. It was like something my opponent's not expecting here. All right. No one drop. Just pass turn. Okay, that's good. There we go. Hey, MTG Nair Girl, getting that sub from Santa Samantha. Getting the hype there. Thank you so much there, Samantha. And MTG Nair Girl definitely deserves it. She's a wonderful, wonderful streamer. If y'all haven't checked out her stream, Uh, usually play, I think, yeah, we can attack here, right? Yeah, we can attack. Plays lots of limited. Over there. So I could, I could shock. I could shock an agent of treachery and steal the frenzy. Hmm. But then I can't like play like your rock from my hand anymore. All right, we're gonna get the Muldratha from the graveyard. So we're gonna sack the Cavalier of Thorns. That's gonna put the Muldratha back. In, on top of the library and then search for it so that now I can I can play you know like Risen Reef, Cavalier of Thorn like this stuff from the graveyard now do you think the cards from Throne like Murderous Rider will fit into Rakdos Aggro with Regisaur since you can cast them from Exile whenever you want yeah I think so yeah like it's you know it's just it's you know good three mana removal spell Murdus Rider is um, that also um, there we go that then you can also make it play as a creature yeah it's a good card it's a good card all right mono red again so negate legion's end choop trophy and out is 
mirror image duplicate immortal sun agent 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 maybe i shouldn't take out find find looked pretty good there neoform hasn't looked spectacular we're gonna trim one neoform and keep the find we're gonna switch those two instead of going keeping two neoform and zero find we're gonna go we're gonna split it one and one this time Yeah, you have to play the creatures from Exile at sorcery speed. You can't play creatures at instant speed unless the creature says it has flash. So yeah, like the adventures, you, you don't get to just play the adventures at instant speed. Hit land. Darn. Another chain whirler would be really rough. I don't really mind them using like a burn spell on Risen Reef as much. It's really just an extra chain whirler where they kill Risen Reef for free. That's what would be more rough. Okay. I need land. I like this trophy here. We're gonna go to the next song. Good job, Yu-Gi-Oh! Got 10th place this weekend. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> no, nothing. No, nothing's wrong with that song. I liked. I liked that song. You know, it's on my playlist and everything. I just wasn't feeling it right then. Mm. Tough call. Tough call. Risen Reef with Negate Backup or to slam the Yurok? But Risen Reef, you know, I get to turn into another card. Um, this is the highest upside. Uh, Firebrand kills Risen Reef. Wow, we got lucky. Man, we'll drop this good too, though. But unfortunately, they get to just firebrand kill Risen Reef with the triggers on the stack, and I assume they're going to do that. If they don't, that is amazing for me. They did not. That is amazing for me. We get to sacrifice this thing. That's very good. And so we can uh, double up on your rock. So yeah, the reason why my opponent didn't do that, I think, is because they wanted to be able to block your rock. Like they wanted to go to combat, block your rock, and then shoot the Risen Reef. But I have, I have a Vanifar right there. That's active.
What? Hijacking my Yurok? It's rude. We can have a, a pretty great next turn. I don't know about pretty great, but you know, we get we're gonna do a whole lot of risenry stuff next turn. Uh, guess not. Alright, one and two. There we go, we're on the board. Played a little better, drew a little better, all that kind of stuff. So we're on the board. <laughs> yeah, stealing your rock is really rude. I hope we're playing against control or like a slower deck. Some deck where Immortal sounds really good against. Um. So with keeping your rock, I'm not going to necessarily be able to play Immortal Sun next turn unless I draw an untapped land. I am not going to sit this one out. Don't worry, I got this. Untap land. There we go. That'll do. So we could double agent of treachery, steal like Teferi and Field of the Dead, or just steal two lands. I mean, yeah, we'll probably just steal Field of the Dead in another land, I guess. Field in Arch of Arazka. We could take both the green sources. Both the white sources. No, I am not making this up as I go. Got a lot of good options here. Now what? Yoink. Who's the land deck now? Looks like it's us. Looks like it's us. Now we can double choop the two rejuvenators here so they don't get to chomp. Oh man. Oh man. Uh, we're gonna take four lands there. Cause you know we we quasi duplicate the one and then we quasi duplicate again, and just take four lands. <laughs> yeah, best top deck possible there. Oh, that was crazy. We're just gonna have six lands of theirs. I guess they didn't like that. <laughs> Yeah, you can't have seven different lands if you don't have seven lands. 
All right, so Ego, Hostage Taker, or sorry, Ego, Assassin's Trophy. This is actually, for how much I've played Sultai Treachery, I've basically hardly ever played against this matchup, to be honest. I play against just like aggro, like vampires, mono red, that kind of stuff, all the time with this deck. So I actually don't know if I have a, a good enough. The thing, the biggest thing I'm worried about, honestly, is the second part of Agent of Treachery. The if you control three or more of their permanents, you draw three cards. Like I'm, I'm worried about that milling me out. I know it's kind of weird, but that's what I'm kind of worried about. So getting rid of a, a find Chupacabra and a Mortal Sun. I don't know, maybe I'm supposed to get rid of some Cavalier Thorns, honestly. Yeah, I kind of... I kind of was just talking and everything and, and took too long there. Cutting find and not having Legion's End means that I'm not going to be able to deal with my opponent going wide. And that is not... Um, not a recommended scenario to be in. Am I supposed to, like, cut mana creatures in this matchup? Because of... Uh, time wipe? I have two, like, I, I kind of have, like, so many cards that, like, there's so many cards to, like, play that, like, look pretty good. We can't play everything. The only land and mana creatures, though. Yeah, I kept the fast hand with just lands and mana creatures. We need to draw top end, but we've only drawn more lands and mana creatures. Yes, Gloom, don't don't rewatch the videos on Twitch. Rewatch the videos on YouTube. Watch them on there. Twitch gets muted because of the music on there. And they're also just broken up by deck and everything on YouTube. That's so it's much easier to use. I did not put up any fight this game. I'm gonna play just a little bit, take another turn. I'm I'm conceding this, but I want to take another turn. So yeah, they are time wiping in Veil of Summer also and everything. <laughs> yeah, that was just all that was just horrible right there. Alright, get find finality back, get Immortal Sun back. Can I get away with... I 
can get away with just that amount of mana creatures. Okay, trying some other stuff. Hey, Wake. No, I think Chupacabra is like we, you know, they they have the Goluses. We got to kill Golos, so I think we need some chup more Chupacabras for that. But yeah, I don't think we need as many Cavalier of Thorns. Ugh, no green mana. I mean, this is just like last hand basically. But I'm, I think this is better than going to five. We'll just get rid of a green black, I suppose. Wow. So my deck only has 24 lands, which with how high my curve is, you'd really expect more lands, but uh, between like the acceleration with the mana creatures and the risen reefs and being like consistently having Risen Reefs with the help of, uh, like, Neoforms, turning your mana creatures into Risen Reefs and everything. And then, of course, the Cavalier of Thorns. I don't actually have as... Like, I'm, like, one or maybe even two lands short. What do you think of a deck with all the five, six, and seven drops? So I'm basically trying to say that there is a good chance that we do not mill out. Uh, darn it, I should have played the breeding pool. Oh well. It kind of looks like I would just like wasted a Chupacabra there, but honestly, getting the Rejuvenator off the battlefield against them with the Time Wipes is, is honestly really nice because of Time Wipes picking back up Rejuvenator and everything. And then, then of course, if they had Golos, we have... The quasi duplicate. Hmm. All right, take care, Kampachi. Sorry, I'm late. Oh, I've done the hero. No, don't cut. Don't cut lands. I read now. Yeah. What pod chain is the most optimal with Eldrain? I'm sure it has to do with the elementals. That's about all I really know there. Well, that was miserable. Not a land for the Cavalier. To info on the arena qualifiers. That's more like it. Um, I don't know if they really announce when like the future qualifiers are, like what days they are. As far as I know, they they don't announce that until it's getting pretty close. Um, but I don't have the link to that. I recommend just just Google searching. Like somebody in chat may have the link to that kind of stuff. Just. You know, Magic Arena qualifiers. Or isn't there a, a link in client? I've got time.
<clears throat> well, this worked out horribly for me. Yeah, I didn't play the, the other Leafkin Druid because of Time Wipe. And then, yeah, my opponent just plays Teferi, takes an extra turn, plays three Field of the Deads, plays a Golos out. Just went horribly for me. And then I, I don't have that other Leafkin Druid, so I don't have the extra mana to be able to negate the, the Veil of Summer. Just everything went wrong there. And of course the Cavalier missed the land also, so we don't have extra land. We whiffed. I know my responsibility. Well, those are two really, really, really ugly games after our first really, really impressive game. So we had one showing where the deck looked awesome, and then two showings where the deck looked terrible in those games. So that's not good. That's not good. Should I camp rank 60 to qualify? I'm not, like... Like in Mythic number 60, the 1,200 people get are qualified each month. So 60, you're very, like you're very good. The top 1,200 people in um, in both Constructed and Limited. Hey Caesar, good afternoon. Feather. I don't like all these shock lands. If I didn't have a shock land, I would have played Vanifar here. But these are all shock lands, so I just got a Risen Reef in play instead. I'm I do really like that the Risen Reef hit um, a land. I like that. So of course if I can't afford a shock. If they have uh, if they have like God's willing, I'm dead, obviously. Um, or anything like really that good. I guess I really do need to just block because they'll just kill the Cavalier either way. Hey, Soul Farmer. 
Don't have much of a plan with uh, this play still just killing me. Yeah, this is still just lethal for my opponent. And all they had to do was just Reckless Rage and then attack and then Reckless Rage again. But they also had God's Willing. So whenever, whenever Feather gets to do all that stuff, their deck is really hard to beat. Two drop and then two drop with removal and then Feather with in infinite removal after that. We're going to give it our best shot here though. Hey, Balding Yeti. Yes, Meteor Golem. Yes, God's Willing cannot protect from Meteor Golem. Correct. I really do like Neoform. I wish Vanifar didn't die to Reckless Rage. Otherwise, I would like Vanifar. But I do like Neoform. So I just need to cut all that stuff. And a mana creature. Going with the Leafkin Druid because the Paradise Druid has the Hexproof right away. Yes, God's, God's Willing counters Hostage Taker and Chubacabra and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, if, if they have Feather and God's Willing, I'm not going to win. I can't, I can't, can't just be like, all right, I'm not going to bring in my removal because removal gets countered. I still got to play it. Need cheap. Cheaper interact. I mean, I, just, I need interaction to begin with, but cheaper interaction than that. Hey, open minded. Negate is good in this matchup where if you negate the God's Willing, then it doesn't resolve, and so then it doesn't go back into their hand. As far as. Um, Feather is concerned. So I really want to hit the land here so we can Risen Reef and Leafkin next turn. Good. I 
All right, so they have a hand where they're struggling more than they had previously. It's a, you know, perfect for us because we had a slow hand but a really good value hand, but just a really slow hand. So this is perfect for us that the game's going like this. All right, going to just hold up negate here. We're going to take a hit for three. But I think being able to keep Neoform for... Keep Neoform for Chupacabra to turn Chupacabra into your rock. They do have to attack into your rock with war boss. So all we want are lands. All right. Fine, scooped him up. And then we'd still have like negate available as well. They have War Boss. It does kind of make me want to play Plague Mare a little more. Mm. I guess Plague Mare is not really that good against War Boss. All right, game three. Yeah, just have to draw all the Risen Reefs and be able to play all of them and everything. That's all we need. Just millions of Risen Reefs. Here we go. Um, I don't think we can keep this. It's tough mulliganing good mana like that and everything, but I think we just have to. Gosh, I like all these cards. These are all good. I guess we have to get rid of one of the five drops. If they have Fry, I'd rather have Cavalier of Thorns. Maybe they'll just keep Cavalier of Thorns. You think I should just keep the two lands? No, we. I think we keep all three.
because especially like how we had it because you know like if I get rid of forest then these would come into play tapped but then it's like if I get rid of the blue land then maybe we don't ha draw another blue land for Risen Reef. If I get rid of the black land, that's going to really hurt us as far as like Chupacabras and like the black land for your rock and everything too. And I, I don't think we could get rid of all those. Yeah, Risen Reef is the best elemental. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay. I like being able to play the Lanoir off here just to like chump block Danto Vanguard. Yeah. <laughs> Air Elemental. Yeah, I guess there is Air Elemental also. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Actually, no, we'll go no blocks. No blocks? No blocks. I wish I had Plague Mare in, in my deck, but I guess I don't. So Yurok does not... <clears throat> Playing Yurok, we don't get to hold up Negate. Drowned Catacomb would come into play tapped. So we're going to get Hinchelin Harbor. This could definitely be rough for us. <laughs> Why they never front channel? It's a good question. I'm not sure. Basically, if we survive a turn, I like our chances, but surviving a turn is going to be tough. But if we survive a turn, I think we got this. Well, it's a... That doesn't make my life easier. Hmm. Next turn, I'm planning on having two Yurok's with Negate backup. That's my plan, is to have double Yurok and play with, with Negate backup, but... I guess I may not be able to actually pull that off. Yeah, I guess we're going to have to chump block with Risen Reef. So we won't be able to get the other the other one then.
So the reason why I want to kill Dreadhorde Arcanists is because if they do have God's Willing, and if I counter God's Willing, I don't want them to be able to get back God's Willing. But me having to... Okay. Me having to, to block there uh, with the Risen Reef really, really hurt. Um, I guess I can't Yurok and Chupacabra. Looks like this could just be over. Because I had to block with Risen Reef. So yeah, this is this is still lethal if my opponent just attacks out. I go down to negative one, they just attack out. I feel like I didn't play that game the best somewhere earlier. I could have had a little bit more life or or something. Not exactly sure where. But um just Feather, Feather is the kind of deck that, you know, has, like, Feather just has, like, a, a good amount of variance uh, built in, but their top-end hands, like, whenever they really curve out, um, I'm probably not going to win, to be honest. And that, that's what we saw games one and three there. Um, you know, like, they just, like, that game, they had a Danto Vanguard into Legion War Boss into Feather plus Spell. Um, or no, I guess I guess they went two drop with spell. Another they went Arcanist first with spells and then Feather with more spells. But yeah, like they curve out with creatures and spells. Um, that's just kind of tough. Uh, and I didn't really have like against that kind of that kind of matchup. I really need like Ravenous Chupacabra early, um, you know, to help. That's like my removal spell. I, I really want that like on turn three. In that kind of matchup, but that's still that's still tough. So, yeah, our deck went one and four. Um, it just happens. I've I've had a a lot of success with this deck recently, like off stream. Also, I've put up a really good record with it. But we played a lot of close games that didn't go our way, and it definitely felt like I could have. I don't know. I don't know exactly what, but it felt like there was like. Like, it was just like the games were just barely slipping away from us, you know? And so, like, with when they were like that, there, it kind of did feel like I could have been doing something differently. Like, we had, like, the Grixis match. Like, I, I think I win that Grixis match almost every time, but um, both both games were we mulligan, opponent has multiple thought erasures, and then curve out into, um, 
like the planeswalkers like the nickel bolus one game chandra the other game early like right on time and um just kind of buried us and then you know we went one and one against mono red the one we lost felt pretty bad i i, I did have a line that i could have taken to win that one so i don't know just that kind of stuff you know some sometimes like the cards line up for you sometimes they don't and didn't line up for us today but that's still soul tie treachery uh Rank up Sunday didn't start off too well. Grixis Control is going to have a lot of work uh, if we're going to make Mythic today. Looks like we're going to have to wait another day or so, um, but that's all right. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, of course, like always, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons over there. But thank you so much for watching some Sultai Treachery, and I'll see you for the next video.